the destruction method. Eric Silver, EJS Golf County. I want to talk to you today about what I see in my lessons all the time, okay? So, typical lessons going on with somebody, and, you know, they take a shot, they're swinging, right? And let's just say they hit it like that. Terrible, right? So, they'll tell you, they'll maybe tell me what they think they did wrong or whatever, and focus on, well, I didn't do this my arm, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. About 99% of the time, it's not even close to what they think they did. And that is not a knock on a golfer at all. Because they don't have the cameras I have. They haven't seen golf swings for 30 years. They haven't studied this like I have, okay? So I don't expect it. I really don't. I assume to know exactly what's going on. I do expect it out of students I teach. Because when they've been long enough, with me long enough, they're able to understand their golf swing. Their golf swing. They don't sit there and focus on, and I don't either, to build Tiger Swing out of somebody out of them. Or Justin Rose is onto somebody. Or Rose Zhang on some of the great females I, I teach. No. It's their own body that they have to swing, swing through, their own anatomy. Everybody's different. Everybody swings at a different tempo. We have our own anatomy, just different ways we move. We have our own joints, the way they move. Some move, some are much more uh, flexible in their joints. Some are tight, kind of like me. So there's so many variables. And to ever try to look at somebody's swing and go, oh, I love the way they're shallow, like right here. And it's like, well, can, can you do it the same way they do it exactly? And would yours look exactly the same, depending on what you're doing? I hate that stuff, okay? Let's build your golf swing and let's make it what you feel is something that you are able to replicate and know that's right instead of always running a YouTube or whatever to look for. Oh, I got this now. What do I do? What do I do? So students I teach don't do that anymore, okay? So they're able to learn it. They're able to learn their golf swing and able to fix their swing on the course. But the destruction method, okay? This is always focusing on what went wrong, okay? What did I do wrong that swing? And it's just all wrong, wrong, wrong. So, okay, so we, they identified it as, okay, I collapsed my right arm too much because I'm trying to get them out here or something, right? So they're like, oh, well, it's just like this, okay? So next time they're going to make sure that's all they think about is that, and they just have this other bad thought, okay? So what I, I teach is this, okay? So if we're working on something, we're going to do some block practice. So let's say, let's use that for an example. So somebody who, you know, I see this quite often as people go up and they, they feel like they, they go here. They think they're they think they're parallel, but they're not. The only reason they're there is because why? That my right arm just collapsed. So really, if you push out, look where the swing is. Really here, which is where probably most people should be, not like here because it's just complete collapse of this arm. So we need to fix that, right? Or they think their left arm's breaking down, which I never work on left arm because left arm's so simple. If you just turn your body, look at where it goes. What happens is when you you turn your body here and you stop turning, that's when you see that. Okay, you can't fight that. You can't you can't turn your body in here until you're going to keep it straight. I mean, you, you can't do it. So that's once again how I teach is like golfers when they don't know the swing that well focus on the issue. So what's the issue? Oh, you're you know if they think it's their left arm breaking down too much. Oh, I got to fix my left arm. Okay, I'm going to keep it straight. This is what I typically see from that. So they end up really inside. They wrap it in here, get way behind the mic, and kind of got it straight. They're flat with their shoulders like this. It, it's awful, okay? So there's an issue always. So when I see, let's just say it is that left arm again, where did it happen? It's, it's never right where you see it, okay? The left arm's clapped, but why? And that's what golfers don't know, and that's why you need a really good coach to help you find out the source of the problem, okay? So now let's say we've identified it. We're going to make some swings. We're going to get back to this right, okay? We're going to just try to feel, I mean, do something like this where we feel we got a nice wrist uh, hinge like this covered. Okay, we're going to get like this and in the posture swing up like we are going all the way up to the top like we're a waiter. Look how wide my white arm is. I'm a waiter at the top. I'm holding it. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to cover the ball like that. So feel some real width. Okay, so I'm going to maybe do that with the club a bit again. Make sure I get like a nice turn and width. So see that? Why? So maybe do that a couple times. Okay, so now it's like, let's try that. Now that you just did it, <laughs> pretty good, huh? So now I only swing right here because that's where we're going to start. We're going to start from 9 to 3, then we'll go up to 10 to 2, then we'll go up to like 11. Okay, but you got to start somewhere, okay? So to get to this point, I guess a little quicker here is quit focusing on what you think is wrong, okay? Because most likely you're not right, okay? And please don't 
write in the comments about what, how, how angry you are with me or whatever, because if you are right, okay, great, okay, you figured it out. So do some practicing, go through it, but focus then when you get over the ball on what do you want, what do you want to do? What are we trying to accomplish? Quit saying, I don't want to do this with my left arm, I don't want to do this with my right. What do you want to do? Here's a great thought that I have, okay? I'll take my hands and I feel, this is, I mean, this is basic general how I feel like swing works. Our body's turning and our hands and club are swinging and they're getting far away from us, okay? The more distance you're gonna have, the more you can get wider, wider, wider. Look how I have more travel time, which is more speed. The more I'm in here, I don't have travel time, okay? The more I'm here, look how much more time I have to gain speed on the way down. So let's say I have that same issue. One of my focuses would be, would, I'd tell the student this, I want you, when you get to the top, we're gonna swing to the top and stop, okay? We're gonna do probably something like freezers, okay? And at the top, we're gonna feel like our hands are as far away from our head and shoulders as they can be, okay? And that's about as far as I can go, but look at how good the right arm is now. You know, it's probably 65, 70 degrees instead of bent down to about 140. Um, on tour, um, with driver, which is crazy, Rory's at like 65, but you barely ever see anybody past 90, ever. Think about how many golfers you see with the right arm here, but all of them just focus on the left when the issue is really in the turn and the right. Okay, so they, you did that one time, rehearse it maybe again in here, wide. Come down the ball. So then let's, we've done a couple of rehearsals. Okay, now what, we, what do we want to do to just kind of get that feel? We've done it. Boom, I didn't hit that great there. Okay, big deal. What did I try to do? I tried to gain this feeling of getting this thing away from me as far as I could. Now, I would say if I redid it, because I'm talking and probably didn't think that well, I would go back to a nine to three or 10 to two, meaning more of swinging just from here. I like to build low and build up from there. Otherwise, we're just gonna revert back to our patterns real quick. Okay, so let's let's kind of try to bring a conclusion to this. Focus on what you can do. So, you know, if I have, maybe I'm having struggles, somebody slicing the ball on a tee, just uncontrollable, okay? So I'll tell you this, focusing on your hips, focusing on anything when you're playing like that or your arm, whatever, don't, it won't do anything. If you understand golf, you'll know why the slice is happening. Why does it happen? What are the physical properties that happen down here at the ball that causes the slice? So I know for a slice to happen that I have to come in, my club face more open to my swing path, okay? I don't care if I'm swinging a little bit like this to the left or if I'm swinging a little bit like this to the right. If I understand golf, though, I'll know my club face is going to be where the ball starts. So I'm able to judge really quick path and stuff because I'll understand how it moves based off those two. So I've done many, many videos on a club and path and figuring out the difference between the two to understand curvature. And so you understand your shots. If you ever want to get really good at golf, it's simple to understand the big fix. Learn how to judge what this ball did in the air when you're playing. Because the worst thing you can ever do is go, oh, okay, I'm slicing. I'm going to really work on my takeaway when I'm playing now. I'm on the course, I'm going to work on this takeaway. What? You, you're coming through with a slice, you have to have your face open. So why aren't you working on this? I'm gonna make sure I get down, I'm gonna close this thing. So here we go. I'm gonna go here. So terrible shot, but did I accomplish what I wanted? Yeah, my face is closed like 12. So. Yeah, that would have been a bad shot on the course. That was bad by me. But here, so the thing is, though, I got it closed. The next shot, I guarantee it's probably going to be pretty good because I now know what I need to do. Now, if you look on here, it starts off to the right and draws. There goes the draw. So what happened to the slice? All I did was fix my face. I made sure I got it too close. Now, the first one I screwed up, um, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I came, what happens when we get our path going out more to the right, really quick our low point gets lower or gets further back so i actually got back here and the club was coming up so in the next one i just realized i need to make sure i'm getting more forward and so i did an external thought of going if the ball is here i'm going to make sure i come down up there and it's perfect contact that's how you make changes on the course but focusing on what you can do right in your golf swing 
I'll just caution you, make sure you know what is right, that you know what you're trying to do is right. Not what you see John Rahm do or anybody else, because it's not for you, I promise. Whatever he does isn't right for you. Um, setup could be, but trying to imitate Dustin Johnson or Rahm with their hands like this, I haven't seen an amateur be able to do it yet um, with, with the kind of power that they have. Because the properties of getting up here and then having to clear so much out of the way and, and generate that speed that Rom does, I mean, the guy's like 260. He's got a lot behind to move through it, okay? So anyways, we're going to focus on, it's not this positive thought thing we're talking about. It's about doing what's right. So whatever it is, we're going to focus on whatever we want to do, which is correct. I'm not going to say, okay, my right arm is, you know, taking this. I'm not going to do that this way. I'm going to say, no, I'm going to get my hands far away from my shoulder and head. Guess what? I didn't break down. Okay, folks. Thanks for watching. Comment section. Leave, leave a question if you have it, and uh, I can talk to you about some more external cues and other stuff like that. So, also subscribe if you get a chance. Eric Sword, EJS Golf Academy.